Since the arrival of the iPhone in 2007, nearly one million apps have been developed, creating hundreds of thousands of new jobs. The app economy is the focus of our monthly look at where the jobs are. The app economy didn't exist before the iPhone burst onto the scene in 2007. In just five years, developers have created nearly a half a million jobs in the United States. Almost a million apps have been developed for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. And by one estimate, the industry generated almost $20 billion in revenue last year. All that according to Michael Mandel, author of a recently published study on the app economy. Apps are absolutely essential for businesses these days. It's a way of sort of for businesses to reach out and actually touch their customers in their pockets. How can you beat it? Tech giants like Apple, Facebook, and Google are all helping create app economy jobs. Electronic Arts, Amazon, and AT&T are also supporting the industry. And social game maker Zynga is all about developing and selling apps. But it's not just about the big guys. You know, we could tell that it was you know, kind of the perfect startup industry. Meet Drew Johnson and Justin LeClaire, former college roommates turned co-founders of App Partner Development, a New York City-based app maker. Unlike like the software bubble, apps are actually making money. People are slowly and steadily requiring more and more apps and that, at least for the next five, 10 years, I think it's gonna keep going. Apple recently passed the 25 billion mark for the number of apps downloaded from the App Store, and the company has paid out more than $4 billion to developers. Good news for LeClaire and Johnson, who are actually turning away work because they can't keep up with the demand. There are a lot of late nights, you know, weekends. Well, for more on the app economy, I want to bring in Chris Cunningham. He's the CEO of Adtivity by App Savvy. Great to have you with Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Uh, and it is startling to realize that half a you know half a million jobs, five hundred thousand jobs, have been created from this app economy. I mean, who exactly is hiring, and where is all this hiring really coming from? I mean, it's predominantly coming from uh, through the largest platforms that actually created the marketplace or the ecosystem. A lot of people think Apple uh, and Google were the first companies that opened up, but Facebook was actually the one that showed how developers could come into a, a marketplace mm. and create applications. I think uh, the, the interesting point that, that I want to make, though, it's less about the cute apps that everyone thinks that goes on their iPhone. I mean, Zynga, yeah. in the segment earlier, Zynga, Pinterest, Spotify, the largest uh, platforms that are c helping connect people through music, through games, they're not apps. They're actually media companies. These are, th these are replacing the sort of traditional... Right, it's not, a, it's not a bunch of guys who've developed some cool app that's going to go on your iTunes. This is really, these are real companies now employing hundreds and thousands of people. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. It's a combination of both. There's that sort of large um, fat tail, which is those companies that were mentioned, but there is a long tail. There are a lot of developers building applications in their mom's basement coming out of sure. uh, great, great schools. But predominantly, it's not just the smaller businesses now that are creating this marketplace. It's mm -hmm. the larger media companies. It's the companies that are trying to help monetize them. It's people that are uh, leveraging platforms to create a more connected and social world. And, and I, think, um, I think we're only on the cusp of it, to be honest. What's the single hottest job in the app economy? Hands down, engineering. If, uh, if there's any uh, young folks watching today, go out and get your engineering degree, become a developer. It's probably the most sought after position. So more uh, demand than supply. Yes. Uh, in New York and San Francisco, there, there is a shortage. We face it our, at our company. Um, there are not enough uh, engineers right now. I would guess that probably 80 or 90 percent of these companies are predominantly led by the engineering team. They are the cool kids. Mm. The nerds out there today are the ones that are shaping <laughs> how all of us are connected. And these jobs, I mean, how do they compare to, you know, the traditional jobs that we think about going off and working in banking or, 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 or you know, or, or somewhere else in the manufacturing sector, industrial or consumer businesses? I mean, do these jobs pay relatively competitively? Are they full staff? Are they mostly freelance? I mean, describe to me what the characteristics are. Well, the first answer to your question, I almost fell asleep when you said the banking comment, <laughs> uh, industrial and these other comments. These are the coolest jobs and the coolest companies on the planet, bar none. Uh, not only are you, uh, are you 
you work in environments with really intelligent people that are shaping the, the, the way that we connect, um, but you get to wear your jeans, bring your dog, get, um, get, get they're paid fun well. Jobs. They're fun jobs. Okay. But, it, but, but back to the pay scale question, um, I would say that they're very competitive. Uh, I would imagine you know, engineers today are, 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 are making um, probably what uh, an investment banker could make depending on their stock option piece, and I think that's the element, right? Um, you're going into these companies to change the world based on a product that you really believe in. Mm -hmm. And the cash element is, is very significant, but ultimately it's that, uh, that equity component that we're seeing through so many companies going through the markets through IPO or acquisition um, in the last 30, 45 days. That's where they're actually beating the bankers. Okay. That's where they're, they're beating. Uh, so you, there's a lot of money to be made. And, and these are really jobs for those just out of college and, and, and really sort of on the younger end of the, of the spectrum, right? We're talking people in their 20s and 30s for jobs like this. We, we are, but we're also seeing folks uh, that have been in market, uh, in digital advertising for a while and making shifts from companies like Yahoo or AOL or even Google to uh, work with next generation social gaming companies, uh, co companies like Spotify, Pinterest, Instagram, Path, um, all these businesses today that are all ultimately shaping um, how we want to stay connected. So um, you're seeing an older generation as well. It, 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 you would assume that this is led by sort of a a 22-year-old crowd. Yeah, it's not necessarily the case. I think there's a very healthy balance uh, of of both uh, age brackets. Okay. All right, Chris. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Shedding some light. Uh, it's nice to see one industry growing and creating jobs. Chris Cunningham, uh, the CEO of Adtivity by App Savvy. And still ahead, how Facebook may have sparked a surge in real estate values in Silicon Valley even before. The company's IPO. It is our Bloomberg big number. And don't forget to join me tomorrow night for my Titans at the Table special on politics and the economy with some of the biggest names in Chicago. That is at 10 o'clock Eastern time right here on Bloomberg Television.